Don't get me wrong, the job market right now, well, it's still really tough out there. But just like anything, we see things going in ebbs and flows. I mean, it isn't the first time we have seen the tech market kind of declined. And the reality is there is much more behind it than we are seeing. It is not because tech is not in demand before. If anything, the roles within tech are paying extremely high salaries for some of them anyways. And those are the ones we are going to cover today. The top highest paying roles within tech. And why are we covering this? It's important to understand these roles, what is possible within this industry as we work our ways, work our careers or grow our careers within this industry to know maybe where we want to put our focus, where we want to put our shift. And I mean, who doesn't like talking about or understanding what is possible with money? Before we get into what are the top highest paying roles within tech, let's take a step back. We really need to understand where this evolution came from to understand where we're headed. Let's head back all the way to the 50s and 60s. I mean, at this time, mainframe computers filled entire rooms. The idea of personal computing was still a distant dream. Now, tech jobs in that era were limited to a select few, mostly mathematicians and engineers that were focused on working on government projects. Fast forward to the 80s, we saw the birth of the personal computer. And I mean, even then we had so many skeptics saying, this will not be a thing. Who would want a computer in their home? This is crazy. Well, they were wrong. And this is really when we saw tech jobs that weren't just for the elite or very specific niches. When I mentioned earlier, mathematicians or very niche engineers, it started broadening these jobs. And this is when the industry really started to explode with different roles such as programmers, hardware engineers, system admins, the list goes on. But here's the thing, things really started to shift and change in the 90s with the rise of the internet. Roles such as web developers, data admins, system admins, which we already mentioned, so many different roles started coming on the scene and really quickly. Now fast forward to 2024, we are seeing another boom. The rise of AI, machine learning, cybersecurity, and advanced cloud technologies. And the demand for these really specific roles could not be higher. Even though the market right now might be a bit disappointing, especially if you're starting out in your career, there are so many skills that you can start working towards to get into these very highly, highly in demand areas. So let's get, let's get into them. Oh, before we do, hit that subscribe button and leave in the comments what other videos you want to see from me. I will do my best to answer every single one of your comments and you can, you can hold me to that. All right, let's get into it. Now coming in at number seven is product manager. And listen, I know product managers get a bad rap, especially from technical individuals, which is kind of funny because many software developers end up moving in to a product manager role if they're looking to use more of their soft skills with technical knowledge. Now this isn't required. You don't have to come from a technical background, but you do need to have a strong understanding of the tech, how it's made. I mean, you're speaking not only to developers on a daily basis, but you're leading an entire team typically, and you need to really know, frankly, what, what you're doing. <laughs> Product managers though have a lot of responsibility, all jokes aside, and this is a very skilled profession if you are to do it right. That is the key here, to do it right, if companies are hiring good product managers. So what is the average salary for a product manager? All right, this is really interesting. In 2024, so today, currently, the average is between 109,000 US and goes up to 137,000 US annually. And I mean, that's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty sweet deal if you are looking to get into product management. The good thing with product management too is there are so many courses online you can take just from home start leveling up, upskilling, get those certifications, and there you go. I mean, it's not as easy as one, two, three, but there are so many steps you can take to really become a product manager, quite simply. Coming in at number six is full stack developers. This is a role we have actually seen increase in demand over the years. And I remember when I was first starting out in my coding journey or first starting out in tech, I thought, these people are unicorns. They need to know everything. When in reality, that's not the case. It's impossible actually. But what they do need to have an understanding of is how both the front end systems work, back end systems work, and various other things depending on the size of company. Basically, if you are interested in this role, full stack developer, whether you're already working in tech or just getting into the industry, you really need to be able to wear multiple hats and be very curious because you are going to be working with potentially quite a bit of different technologies and you need to understand how they all work together. 
Now, how do you become a full stack developer? Well, I always say for these roles, it's best to start with either the front end or back end. And then once you've mastered one, you can learn the other. And that's really why this role is one of the higher paying roles out there is because it's not typically something you do right out of school or as your first job. There's always different use cases, but that's typically not the role you'll go into, it will be either front end or back end developer. And then over time, as you gain experience, be able to do both. Now I'm on builtin.com and it says here the average base salary in US for full stack developers is 147,000 US. Now this is really interesting to me. I definitely think this is pretty accurate. It really can vary though. If you are someone in Europe watching this, it might be significantly depending on where in Europe you are. I've heard from a lot of my friends who live in Germany, it's gonna be a lot lower. US though, it does pay really high for full stack developers. Here's a fun tip because I am Canadian. I am not American. When I was looking for my last uh, two roles ago, not my last role, my two roles ago, as a developer advocate, what I did was I looked for remote jobs based on the US and was able to negotiate in a US salary. And then in turn, because of the currency difference, I got paid significantly higher than my Canadian friends who are working for Canadian companies. That's just a little side tip. I don't know if it always works, but for me, I've had really good success looking for remote positions that are based or you can live anywhere, but the company is based out of the States. Coming in at number five is AI or machine learning engineer. It's machine learning engineer, but you know, we got to throw the AI in there because it's the hype word right now. This is coming in at number five because there are still roles that are more in demand or higher paying than machine learning engineers. They are definitely one of the top right now. That is why they are included in this list, but don't get me wrong. There are still some, that beat it out in this video. Well, in these lists for 2024, 2025. Now I don't see obviously this role decreasing, but it will continue to grow in demand for the next years to come as AI continues to boom. These systems are getting built out. Engineers are going to need to not only be building them out, but maintaining them as well. And there is a massive talent gap for good machine learning engineers. Now I'm gonna stop saying in every point for good because there's always individuals who maybe pivot into a role for the wrong reasons, such as, well, frankly, money. So look, Tiff, then why are you doing a video based on money? Because it, whether we like to admit it or not, it is exciting to think about building our skills to a point where they qualify for these level of roles and the income that comes with it. All right, so what can you expect on average for a machine learning engineer to make? Well, salaries for a machine learning engineer ranges from 97,000 to 133,000 annually. And these are based by the way, which is pretty crazy. Coming in at number four, we have cybersecurity engineer. And get this, this is really interesting. Experts predict by 2025, which is coming up, there will be 3.5 million unfilled positions in cybersecurity. And that's, that's massive when you think about the potential that you have if you are someone who is interested in cybersecurity or growing a career in that direction. Now for this point, this example, we are talking about cybersecurity engineers, but really there are so many roles within cybersecurity, both technical and non-technical, that are very high paying. So let's see what we got here. For cybersecurity engineer, we are coming in at between 119,000 US and 148,000 US. And it even goes on to say top earners can pull up to $165,000. This is really huge. This is big money. And if it's something you're interested in, it's definitely worth exploring. Cybersecurity isn't going anywhere, especially with the rise of AI and these, how these systems are being built. When we think of the security side of things, this role or roles within cybersecurity are going to continue to increase in demand. And there are a lot of spots to fill based on this. Coming in at number three is data scientist. You knew data scientist was going to be on here and coming, or I hope you did anyways. Data scientist isn't going anywhere. This role is continuing to grow in demand, not only this year, but looking ahead as well. And I mean, in today's data-driven world, these professionals are like the superstars. I, I don't think we say this anymore, but we used to say it was the sexiest job, uh, you know, a few years back. And then before that it was software developer was. I'm not sure why, I think it's machine learning engineer would be considered that right now anyways, if you will, but it definitely is a very in demand and popular job. And people seem to really enjoy this role. When I talk to my friends who are data scientists, they are all very excited about it. Actually on that note, coming up in the next video, depending on when you watch this, but if you watch this video when I release it, 
is an interview with a data scientist who doubled her salary. And I'll link it down below for when it's live. And But it's interesting though, data scientists do so much more than just analyze data or crunch numbers. They are really the ones that are helping companies make better data-backed decisions. So a lot of times data scientists will meet with their stakeholders or bosses to inform them of how and why things are working and not working. The average salary for a data scientist is coming in around 108,000 to 132,000 with more experienced individuals making around 171,000 US. Now, of course, this number can continue to increase based on company size, location, and years of experience. These are just the averages. Coming in at number two is cloud security engineer. I mean, every company nowadays, it feels like is moving to the cloud if they haven't already. And if they are currently moving, they probably are a little bit behind. These professionals are absolutely critical, crucial for different businesses to have as they move and stay on the cloud. Now, cloud security engineers need to be experts in complex security frameworks, cloud platforms such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and more. And yes, this is a very challenging role. There is a lot to learn and it goes quickly. It keeps on evolving and changing quickly. But honestly, I feel like what job in tech doesn't do that anymore. Now, there are some high salaries starting out from 80,000, working its way to 110,000 on average. And top earners, it goes on to say, can make around 180,000 US. That is, that sounds like a nice number to me. Coming in at number one, you made it to number one. If you made it to number one, leave down in the comments that you did. I am giving you extra love today because you are committed. You are committed to understanding different roles in tech and the salaries that come with them to better yourself and your career, which is really cool if you ask me. Coming in at number one is cloud solutions architect. I'm curious, is this something you thought would be number one? Did you think a different one would be? Leave that down in the comments too. Here is why they are coming in at number one. I mean, well, aside from the obvious, which is their salary. First off, becoming a cloud solutions architect is no walk in the path. This requires many years of experience, many skill sets. It's not something that you can just decide, I'm going to become a cloud solutions architect one day. Well, you can, but the work behind it needs to really be happening. Aside from all the technical knowledge that comes with this role, you also need to have strong communication skills, management skills in order to become a cloud solutions architect. This role, you are not only conversing with the tech, building the tech, but you're also conversing with the clients. I don't know if you can converse with tech, but we're gonna go with that. All right, let's see, what are, this is the average for this role? In this role, you can earn salaries from 113,000 US all the way up to 140,000 annually. And here's the interesting part. The top cloud solutions architects can earn up to over 200,000 US annually. That's pretty incredible, especially if you are someone who's working towards this role, or maybe you're in this role, and you really are enjoying what you're doing. You like that mix of both technical, soft skills, communication. It's pretty exciting if you ask me. All right, we made it to the top seven roles in tech, not only for 2024, but looking ahead too. It's very exciting. I'm curious to hear what role are you most interested in? I'm going to start having experts come on this channel and talk about their different roles. As I mentioned, the first one with data science will be happening this Friday. Uh, but if there are any other roles that you want to see or hear or learn from that I bring on this channel, leave in the comments. All right, everyone, I hope you have an amazing day. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.